ask most people the best thing about the Mazda MX-5, and apart from the obvious reliability advantages over the MGBs and Lotus Elans that inspired it, they'll probably say the simplicity. The MX-5 doesn't have hundreds of horsepower, loads of driver aids, or all sorts of luxuries and creature comforts to help you out, it's just pure undistilled essence of sports car. Small, light and simple. So what happens then if you take that same formula and you make it bigger, heavier, more powerful, more complicated and a lot more luxurious? We end up with this, the Mark III MX-5, also known as the NC generation. Now the purists, they look down on the NC. They say it's too big, too heavy, too complicated and it got away from what the Mazda MX-5 is all about. But are they right? Is this the black sheep of the MX-5 family? Or particularly now the values are at an all-time low, is it actually a bit of a hidden gem? Now, first of all, you might be wondering what a 2014 plate car is doing on Classics World. Well, there's two things you've got to bear in mind. Number one, the NC MX-5 actually came out in 2005, which makes it a 16-year-old car in 2021, even if this specific one isn't. And number two, this specific car is a 25th anniversary edition MX-5. And that means that as well as this gorgeous sole red paintwork, these rather nice 17-inch wheels, and some Bilstein dampers, you also get the larger two-liter engine with a six-speed gearbox, you get air conditioning, you get cruise control, you get heated leather seats, touchscreen sat-nav, oh, and a power-operated folding hardtop roof. And this all-the-trimmings version of the Mark III is probably the best way to embody why the purists don't like it. We'll start with the increase in size. Ah, oh, it's so much bigger than the Mark II, they exclaim. And they're right, the Mark III is bigger. It's two inches longer and 1.6 inches wider, which in real world terms is a trifle. Every new generation of car gets a couple of inches longer and wider, and the cabin is that much more spacious. So yes, it's bigger, but you're not really paying for it. And in real world terms, this is still a small car. It might not look it in isolation with its big flared arches, swollen lights and its bigger wheels. And all of that design is courtesy of Murray Callum, a younger brother of a certain Mr. Ian Callum of Jaguar fame. But put the Mark III MX-5 next to any car of its era and certainly any car made since and you'll discover that the MX-5 is still very much a small car. It's just bulked up a little bit. And talking of bulk, that's the next criticism that the purists have with the Mark III. Oh, it's so much fatter and heavier, they say. In fact, the biggest difference between the Mark III and the Mark II that it replaced, if you go for all the options, the bigger engine, the biggest difference is 40 kilograms. 40 kilos, that's the same as having a child in the passenger seat or a tank full of fuel. It really isn't anything worth worrying about. And when you delve a bit further, you discover that that little bit of weight gain isn't actually through being a bigger car. It's got side airbags for better crash protection. It's got thicker A-pillars for better rollover protection. It's got bigger wheels, bigger engines. It's impressive that they did all that and it only weighs 40 kilos more at most. And Mazda did that through some clever engineering. When they were developing the NC, they used something called the gram strategy, which said that if even a single gram could be shaved off of any one component without affecting its functionality, they do it. The boot lid skin is now aluminium, the engine cover and the inlet manifold are now plastic, and my favorite one of all, the bezel for the rear view mirror. It's now shallower and thinner than previously, and that saves a crucial 84 grams. And even that folding power hardtop doesn't add a great deal of weight. Because it's polycarbonate as opposed to metal, it only adds 36 kilograms. But the other benefit of that hardtop is that when the roof's up, it actually turns into quite a refined, sophisticated place to be. There's minimal road noise, there's minimal wind noise. Obviously, it's a lot more waterproof and temperature proof during the inclement months than a soft top will be and it just generally feels like a more grown-up car to be driving around in. Probably a good way to summarise the NC on the whole, really. It's more comfortable, it's more economical, you'll get 37 to the gallon on a run, it's a lot safer, it got a four-star Euro NCAP safety rating, and it's the kind of car you feel more comfortable using for a long trip, or even using it day to day, if you happen to still have a commute. And that theme continued to the drive as well. Mazda wanted to make the Mark III just that little bit more approachable for those who'd never had a rear-driven sports car before. 
and that means ditching the all-round double wishbone suspension that you got in the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 for front double wishbones and a rear multi-link setup borrowed from the RX-8. Yes, the suspension isn't quite as firm, but that ultimately means that on mangled British B roads, it's actually possibly better. And this steering gives you loads of lock, so you can adjust it mid-corner and get it exactly where you want. It's still light, it's still chuckable. If I'm being picky, it's maybe not quite as fingertip sharp as a Mark II is. But the flip side is, the NC does ride better. Even on these bigger 17-inch wheels, it is more supple down bumpy British b rows and it's a lot comfier in town. Of course, you might be sitting there saying, ah, but the NC's got more power. That means it takes less effort to have fun down a twisty road in it. No, this is still not a fast car. This two litre, the biggest engine ever fitted to an MX-5, still only gives you 157 horsepower. Rev the nuts off it, and you're still only gonna get to 60 in 7.9 seconds. It just has that little bit of extra power to cart around that tiny little bit of extra mass. It's still an MX-5. It still rewards putting the effort in to rev it and make it move. And that actually is what it's all about. I want to have to ring it out a bit. You do, and when you do, it puts a smile on your face, just like an MX-5 should. In conclusion then, ignore the purists. The NC MX-5 is a fantastic little sports car, whether you compare it to its forebears or not. And here's a thought for you. What with Mark 1 and Mark 2 values only going up now, and rust in those cars getting harder and harder to stave off, a Mark III, which you can get into from about two grand these days, starts to look like an ever more appealing option, particularly when you consider that these cars don't really rust. The Mark III is comfier, safer, more economical, easier to drive long distance, very nearly as much fun on your favourite road, and these days, probably cheaper as well. Far from being the black sheep then, the NC MX-5 could well be the pick of the bunch.